The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the June 8th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Steve e. Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on it at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial them, we've got you covered there, too. You can always send me an email. Send it to steve at tfnn.com. And inside that subject heading, if you would be kind enough to put radio show question. Of course, in our Tigers, Den, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started. A wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, we got all the U.S. indices trading to the downside without any volume. You've got the Dow down 232, the S&P's down 34, the Nasdaq's off 79, Russell's off 24, Semi's down 77, Trendy's off about 500 points right now. They're taking a hit. You've got gold up five bucks, silver's down six cents, lights we crude up 365, natural gas up 13 pennies, and a 30 year treasury trade out at 137. That's off nearly one point. Lead the charge dollar wise, the upside. You got booking holdings up 12 bucks, Alibaba up 12 bucks, Tesla up 12 bucks, Mercado Libre up about uh, nine, Roku is up by 10. To the downside, Equinix Inc. up uh, 19, Avis is down 13, Lamb Research down 12, BlackRock is up 12, Asimo Holdings is down 12 bucks as well. Sorry about that, folks. Did not have that turned off. Um, but everything is moving without volume. What I mean by that is if we just simply go take a look at our index ETFs out here, we've been trading effectively for three and a half hours, a little over three and a half hours. Volume inside of the spies today, 27 million shares. Yesterday's volume was that a move higher, a move lower out there? Let's say it was a move lower. Certainly, that was 59 million shares out there. Um, so there is no volume inside the spies. The Qs, pathetic. 23 million shares. This price runs into resistance out here. That's the top of its uh, profile at 311.31. But I didn't mention it. Volume today is 23 million shares. Yesterday they did volume. It did volume of 44 million shares. Um, the diamonds today's volume is 1.2 million. There's no volume at all whatsoever. So um, what's that mean, Jelly Bean? I don't know. Let's continue. Well, I'll tell you what that means. That means that the pattern that is in play, the pattern is going to stay here at least today. What pattern are you referring to, Steve-O? Excellent question. Let's go take a look at it. Those patterns are referred to as the consolidations that have set up inside of at least three of the four equity future contracts. And quite frankly, all of the index, uh, all the cash indices out here. But right now, we're taking a look at the ES Mini upper left-hand side. I've drawn in that little rectangular consolidation. Uh, that's not going to be, does not appear that that will be broken in either uh, in either direction, nor will the NQ out here. That's the upper left-hand or upper right-hand chart. Lower left-hand chart is the Dow Equity Future contract. And the one equity future contract that is not in a consolidation is Russell 2000. Instead, she is formed 
an A to B equals C D to the upside. It is beyond the one to one level out there. So headed higher until it generates a bearish reversal candle, which would then confirm a sell the D point pattern out there. So we just got a good old fashioned consolidation in the summertime when there's really no volume to speak of out here. Um, you've got that spot volatility X that's still below its 50 day exponential moving average. However, let's change screens here. However, it did form a TD. Well, let's not change screens. Cancel. Let me go see if I've got this chart up here. It might just be easier to do this. Uh, indices, yeah. So I'll pull over the spot volatility index. Here we go. So here's the spot volatility index. And you can see yesterday was the bar following bar number nine. So it's got a, a TD9 count in play that would get negated if price closed below yesterday's low. What was yesterday's low for the spot volatility index? Well, it was 23.88. It's been tested. So far, it has been rejected out there. Now, we can also see that the oscillator and change line has changed colors. It went from green to red. What typically occurs here is when you get a completed pattern. So we've got the TD9 count coupled with now a change in color on the oscillator and change line, price and that line should catch up to each other. Now, the line currently is printed at 26.29. That does not mean the spot volatility will move up to 26.29. It could be the line moving lower, price moving higher, some sideways, uh, you know, so right now. But the key thing here for the spot volatility is that the thing you'd write down on your pad of paper or your forehead is uh, 23.88 if you're playing liar's poker out there. So 23.88, if you get it close below that, that's going to then suggest that the spot volatility should go target its lower Bollinger Band rating, about 2186. And if it does that, then the ES Mini should be able to move higher out there. We don't have that message right now. We just have a message of really a consolidating pattern out here. Uh, the spot volatility, you've got a couple of different TD9s that have worked and some that didn't work. Now, uh, so it said I've got really just the, the four of them. So four? I think I've got four on this uh, screen out here. So two that worked, two that didn't work out there. So it's really kind of a toss-up as we speak right now. But still something to pay attention to. Um, what else should we be paying attention to? The other thing I guess to be paying attention to is the New York Stock Exchange, the advanced decline oscillator. So let's go check in on it and see what it is generating for us as far as signal information. At least what it, uh, let's go see what it was. I haven't touched this chart. I haven't looked at it since this morning and since it uh, went out in the uh, newsletter. So let's go take a look at it. What do we have here? We have basically a, a rising highs, higher highs inside the New York Stock Exchange with declining bottoms pattern out here on the advanced client oscillator. Advanced client oscillator is the difference between the 39 and 19 period exponential moving average of the advanced decline line. Now, it's working off an oversold condition. Oversold is just when you get to the 150 level. This was at 320 or 330 out there. Um, but it's continuing to fall. But boy, New York Stock Exchange has held up really well out there. But typically that leads to some type of retracement or some type of move lower out there. We really don't have that as we speak just yet, but something to think about, something to continue to observe out there. What else is it that we want to observe? That's a great question. And I don't really know. I mean, if we go take a look at the uh, intraday charts out here, we'll change screens again. We'll go over and take a look at the ES Mini. You know, or since we're talking about the spot fix, we should really talk about the ES Mini. And here we just take a look at the daily time frame and its intraday chart. So the daily, we don't need to talk about anymore. Consolidation. Until it gets busted, that's the pattern that's in play out here. I don't really have much other than a consolidation in the five-hour chart. Out here, the two-hour chart, not provided us with a ton, nor the 60-minute. The 30-minute uh, uh, price is moving back to a level of support. It's breakout level of support of 41.24. So if price does close below that or two consecutive bars below that on a 30-minute basis, that would then suggest lower price. But not a ton to report here either. So when we get back for this break. Let's go take a couple of questions. We'll be right back. of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in the Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve 
in a 16-year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Welcome back, up, folks. So, we're going to go take a look at uh, ERF, that is Enter Plus Corporation. This is for uh, Mimi. Mimi writes in and says, uh, please look at the profiles of ERF. Also, is this stock overbought right now? So from a profile standpoint, uh, Mimi, price is trading above all profiles, daily, weekly, monthly. The uh, profile for the weekly or for the monthly, the top of it is 1282. The top of the weekly, 1153. The top of the uh, daily is 1258. So profiles are not an issue for you. If we look at the monthly chart, your question is, is it overbought? And I don't have the RSI up here. What I don't have on a uh, daily time frame is some kind of uh, signal to suggest that it's overbought at this stage. In fact, on a monthly time frame chart, this says stay put here. Why? Because last month was a TD9 count top. Now, we're early in June, but right now price is trading above that. It took it out like, uh, you know, a hot knife on some uh, good butter out there. Just sliced right through it. Not even a hiccup out here. So this suggests that the Enter, Enter Plus Corporation is the Energizer bunny and should continue to move higher. We have that same message out here, maybe, from the weekly time frame chart. God, I hate this Apple system now and what it does to emails. This is crazy. Crazy stuff out there, but it is what it is. And just uh, I don't want to lose this email because then it's going to hard for me to figure out who's asking or who's not. In any event, on the weekly time frame chart, no topping signal here. It has triggered a rose momentum indicator signal, but needs a bearish reversal candle to confirm that top. So that suggests we move higher. The daily time frame formed a TD9 count top two days ago. Yesterday was not even a hiccup, just sliced right through it. So, you know, maybe it's overbought, so to speak. I would stay put. Uh, out here in this uh, instrument. Uh, only topping signal really at this stage here is from the 30-minute and the 15-minute chart. Both have 
TD nine count patterns out there, but prices pulled back and tested support. It looks like it's seventeen thirty two and seventeen seventy three. So again, no reason to jettison this position. Now, look, you want to use prudent management here. Perhaps adjust your stop. The average true range on a ten day basis is seventy eight cents. Mimi, so if you're in this trade, take seventy eight cents times one point six one eight. Come up with whatever that figure is. I don't know off the top of my head. You know, it's probably uh, I don't know a buck ten. I don't know what it is, though, when you multiply times 1.6. But whatever it is, just subtract that from today's close. And uh, that would be kind of your adjusted uh, stop on this. You can continue to lower it if you want. But you don't want anything to go haywire during the day out there. And the 1.618 of an average 10-day uh, uh, a trading range out there should be good enough to uh, stop that. So I would stick with ERF. Uh, congrats to you on uh, that and hope that that helps you out. Hector. And the fuel injectors right in. And Hector wants to take a look at tick symbol BDX. So let's get that populated out here. Figure out what BDX is. And the question reads like this. Happy, wacky, wonderful Wednesday. Well, happy, wonderful Wednesday to you as well. BDX has been in a four-year consolidation. What are your thoughts on BDX? Yeah, maybe it's going to stay consolidating for five years out there. But let's go take a look at BDX. Uh, first, let's see here. Let's try to figure out this uh, consolidation. So you, uh, two, I'd say you get a five-year consolidation, 2017. What is it that Hector is looking at? So let's do this here. We're going to switch charts. Then we'll go back to the white background charts. Um, screen, change screens. Give me a moment. We're on the black background screens. What you can also see out here, Hector and Patty, is you can see a descending trend line, a rising trend line. Price is trading in between that. But really, the consolidation pattern that Hector's referring to looks like this. And that pattern here, as I say, you take this thing back into the 2017 time frame. Uh, here's up at the highs. Here's up at the lows. That's basically your consolidation and what we don't know about a consolidation, Hector and Patty, is which way will this thing break? Are there any clues or signals? The only signal right now, we take a look at the monthly time frame chart, suggests that price should go test at least the descending trend line to the top of the consolidation. The reason we reach that conclusion is because price is trading above the top of its monthly profile out there. But let's come back here, see what else we see. You're consolidating inside a weekly profile. It's bullish in structure. If price can close above 256.65 on a weekly basis, odds favor move to 271. The daily time frame says I'm not ready for you to do, to do that not until you clear my level of resistance which is at the 258.85 area that is the top of its profile let's go back to those white background screens see if there's any additional information that we can share with Hector and Patty um, and as I look at it right now we've got this thing populated there is not I, I don't see nothing really stands out to me of significance uh, here when I see these charts. So you're just stuck in a good old uh, consolidation in Beckton Dickinson. I do hope that helps you out. We had a request uh, inside the Tiger's Den. That was to take a look at ticker symbol SBLK. I'm going to guess that that is a bulk shipper out there. And uh, so let's get those charts here to populate. Star bulk carriers. Uh, whoa, this is having a, a tough day out here with some volume to the downside. So let's um, see if we get this thing here to populate pretty quick. So we can. So from a uh, weekly, monthly standpoint, you now have potentially, it's early in the month, Potentially, a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. It requires a bearish reversal candle uh, to confirm that pattern. So you get a circle back around month's end. But if you get a bearish reversal candle and then you get a close below its oscillator and change line, you've got a change in trend signal out here. So let's pull this back a little bit, make it a little bit easier for you to see. So we don't have price not been below its oscillator and change line since May of 2020 out there. So if you were to see a close blow 2648, that is certainly telling you about a change in character out here. Now, that character uh, might only take you down to 2347, which is the top of its monthly profile. But I would say counter trend moves in uh, something like SBLK would actually, if it can get below that oscillator and change line, would take you back to 1816. 1816 is the center of that bearish structured profile out there. So it does say be careful when we look at the monthly chart. The weekly chart out here, what is this communicating to us? Well, right now, price is just back inside its profile levels out. Oops, I didn't expand the chart. There we go. Back inside its profile out here. And uh, price closed below 2801. It's suggesting move to 2402. 
Let's go look at the daily chart, see what additional information we can gleam out of this. The breakout area is 25.30, so if you get a close below 27.97, you'd expect price to get down towards that 25.30 level. At that area, you've got some uh, you've got some buyers. You have buyers. There was a hammer candle that formed on March the 15th. You had another hammer candle that formed on April 25th. So those would be the areas to the downside that you would be looking uh, towards. And it uh, watch 27.97 at this stage of the game. If you get a close below that, that's telling you about price moving lower inside of this instrument. As I look to the intraday charts out here, not a ton to report on for you at this stage of the game. So I hope that helps you out with regard to, that was for uh, Meg Uppy inside the uh, Tiger's Den. Make sure I ask, answer the questions. I've had it for several months and it was doing well. It's uh, down big on heavy volume today. Last time it did that, it rebounded the next two days. Sell, hold, or buy more. I would say um, have a stop in place out here. You know, definitely have a stop in place. Um, 27.97, you know, is an area that could be or should be support. If you go ahead and take a look at, you're thinking, hey, last time I did this, I know what the exact opposite reaction was. So, uh, you know, maybe tomorrow is where you learn something else. But it does look like this wants to continue head lower. Steve Rhodes with TFNN will be back in just a few. But, folks, I would love to hear from you. 877-927-6648 or Steve at TFNN.com. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. FNN.com. Tom O'Brien has just announced a live Timing the Trade webinar Friday, June 10th from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Join Tom O'Brien for five hours of live education as he teaches you his trading methodology right from his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. In this live webinar, Tom O'Brien will be teaching you his entire trading system, including quality volume, ABC structures, Fibonacci confluence zones, cause and effect, swing points, and more. We will be limiting this class to 40 attendees, so please do not delay and reserve your seat today for this special live event with Tom O'Brien. All attendees will also receive a physical copy of his book, The Art of Timing the Trade, an $88 value, mailed to you, along with a free month of his daily newsletter, Market Insights, a $169 value. For all the details and to reserve your seat today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, I just have one simple question for you. Are you feeling the love? 
Well, if you aren't, you're going to feel it now because we've got a request to go take a look at ticker symbol L-O-V-E. That is Love Sack Company out there. That's for Dan inside our Tiger's Den. And, uh, Dan, I don't know the exact question. I think it's kind of slid past me out here. But we're, I'll just start evaluating the charts out here. And then if there's something that uh, you're looking for that I didn't get to, please let me know. So on a monthly basis, you've got a TD9 count up. Let's just expand out the chart. Let's go from big picture on in. Big picture, TD9 count, and roads momentum indicator top. That has taken price below support, the support level of its monthly profile, and it's taken price all the way down towards its breakout level, and that's at 22.89 out there. Um, so I don't have a bottom signal, and price has not gotten all the way to 22.89, so that may be its target. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, what do we see? Well, we can see A to B patterns we can see several of them price stalling at a breakout level of 2852 but i don't see a bottom pattern out here dan i see price below the bottom of its uh, weekly bullish structured profile and its oscillator and change line that suggests to you and i that the weekly says lower price so you've got the monthly and weekly say lower price at least at this stage of the game or at least that the daily time frame today is kind of an interesting day. You've got big volume behind it. No idea what's behind the volume. I don't need to know that. You're already about 3.3 million shares, but big volume to the downside. That big volume tested its bullish structured daily profile. So what you know and what I know, and now those of us listening in here, know that 28.52 is a significant level of resistance. Now, price is testing that swing point. It has tested that swing point. The swing point from February 20, May 25th, shoot 750,000 shares out there. You don't see that on the white screen. I'm just looking at that on my black background screen just so we've got a perspective out here. Typically, when you push down into a swing point with volume, you end up going back down to that level. But if price closes above the top of its profile today, Dan, that's at 3470, you'd have two different messages. One would say, okay, I'm through the resistance level as it was the last four or five days, and I'm ready to resume my move higher out here. Uh, <coughs> So that's what the daily – so the daily time frame chart, really, how do we uh, – how do where do we go from here in the daily? I would say that if the daily closes above 34.70, then – well, you should see, if I go back to that weekly chart out here, I think that then tells us where price is headed to, and that would be the top of its profile. Dan, and that's at the 41.31 41 level. However – now that we look at the weekly chart, both you and I know the only way that's going to happen is price has to close above that red oscillator and change line, which is 37.16. So um, it's just choppy, I guess is all I can say. But, you know, today's today's individual um, signal to us that support is held, that 28.52 is a real key level of support. So I hope that helps you out. And uh, we had a question yeah, the cough kind of comes in and out out there, uh, uh, Pirate uh, Z, the dreaded Pirate Z. Uh, but they end up been, uh, And that's our segue into currencies because the pirate wants to go take a look at some of the major currencies. So let's go take a look at those currencies. The first currency pair being the euro. The euro represents, what's the percentage? Somebody out there knows. Is it 57%? I think it's 57% of the U.S. dollar index. So let's go big picture on it. Big picture, the euro has formed a nice bottom, a TD9 count bottom. The oscillator and change line changed colors months ago. Price net lines should catch up to each other. Currently, the oscillator and change line on a monthly basis is at buck eleven. So you got a nice bottom. That bottom formed at a breakout level of support of a buck four. If we take a look at the weekly time frame for the euro, what do we know about it? Well, what we know is prices trade above its oscillator and change line. There certainly are A to B equals CD patterns out here. So this is suggesting that price should continue to move higher. Now, move higher to where? I'd have to really do a uh, Fibonacci retracement level. Hard for me to do that here, but E U R E U S D. Let me see if I get that going on my, yeah, shoot, A O. Uh, I can't. I can't. So what I would do out here, dreaded Z, is 57.6%. Uh, Thank you, Duffy. Uh, is just take a uh, retracement level from eh, – I should do that for you, though. Come on, Stevie. Get your act together out here. Okay, I'm going to get my act together. Just give me a moment. Give me a moment to do that. We'll change screens out here. we got to be thorough. 
You know, I, I also have this belief. You, I, you know, I have several beliefs out there. This one belief, though, this belief I know to be true, true as a bell, whatever that means out there. And that is the way you do anything is absolutely the way you do everything in life. So, um, yeah, if I'm thorough here, I'm thorough pretty much everywhere. So let's go take a look at the retracements. I'll pull over this other screen here momentarily, just getting the uh, just getting the symbol set up and everything else. So now we'll change screens out here. And this is where price is likely headed to. We haven't taken a look at the daily time frame chart to suggest otherwise just yet. But on a weekly basis... Uh, and don't pay attention to these profile levels. They don't mean anything when we take a look at this. But from a uh, the 0.382 retracement, from the highs out here that uh, on, on, on uh, January the 4th, that was a TD9 count top out there, all the way down to the uh, completion of the A to B equals CD pattern, the 0.382 retracement is a buck 11. So a buck 11 is most certainly in play out here. But before price can get up there, we're going to have to see some um, something on the daily time frame. I don't know what that is just yet. We're going to go take a look here. Something to suggest that that is a likely outcome. So now... We take a look at the daily time frame chart here for the euro. What do we have? We have a TD9 count top out here. So here's your resistance level now. Your real resistance level is going to be the bar following bar number nine. And that was on the trading day of May the 30th. And that high is at 1.0787. If price closes above that, then that pen will get negated. And then that will be the signal that the euro should rise to the buck 11 area out here. Now, even though we've got a TD9 count top, Typically, what happens is the first area, the first target area on any kind of move is the oscillator and change line. And price got close to it, hasn't hit it as we speak just yet. But as long as price is above that, it's not a bearish signal. We really have a neutral signal out here. So you got neutral signal. But again, if price overcomes the May 30th high, then that's telling you that the euro wants to head higher. So the monthly, just to summarize, the monthly's got a nice bottom out there, TD9 count bottom. The weekly has a buy the D point bottom and suggests at least a dead cat bounce to 111. And the daily says if you take out the TD9 count high, that's the weekly chart is uh, the 111 area becomes a real possibility. There would also be an A to B equals CD to the upside pattern that we would look at. We don't have that just yet. I'm not going to draw that in. doesn't make any sense. We don't really need to. So that's what's going on. We take a look at the euro. I hope that answered your question there, the dreaded pirate inside the tiger's den the next currency that we'll go take a look at is the great british pound the great british pound uh, represents a weighting of about uh, 12 percent out here great british pound like the euro formed a nice monthly td9 count bottom does it right at breakout support at 1.2360 out there on the uh monthly on the weekly time frame you also have an a to b equals cd pattern now price here has to overcome it's oscillator and change line. The oscillator and change line is a buck point two fifty eight. So if price can close above one point two five eight or so, that's going to suggest to move higher. Its sights would be set at a buck thirty four. I'm not saying that we have the signals to suggest that price is headed up there, but that would be its sights. When you look at the daily time frame chart, you have a TD nine count top out here that says that price needs to close above one point two six six seven to get its mojo back to the upside. That mojo would then take us to the buck 30 level 1.309 specifically that's a td9 count breakdown level now price yesterday did test and reject that red oscillator and change line so you know that is a level of support out there so the great british pound if it can clear the buck 25 level and then its next area of resistance is going to be that high from a 27 that's at a buck 2.267 close above that then the pound would be headed higher now if the euro heads higher and the pound heads higher the dollar would head lower right there. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today.
technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's uh, finish out the uh, currency area by taking a look at the uh, Japanese yen out here. So we've got the euro and the pound potentially putting some weakness into the U.S. dollar. And that is not the case for the Japanese yen. As the Japanese yen in this chart moves higher, that is weakening and the U.S. dollar is getting stronger. Now, the yen is the second uh, heaviest weighting inside of the uh, U.S. dollar index, about 13 percent or so. So if we take a look at the monthly time frame chart for the yen. Right now, as we speak, month is early, but right now what price is doing is negating a TD9 count top. That says that the yen wants to get weaker in a big way. In a big way, what does that mean, Stevie? Um, I don't have enough data out here to figure out where its next uh, price target is, so I'd have to do that. I'm not going to do that right now as we speak. Just simply the yen on a monthly basis suggests that it wants to continue to weaken. That will put strength inside the U.S. dollar index. On a weekly basis, price is already negating. It looks like it will negate a TD9 count top this week. So that says that it wants to move higher. So that says further weakening on the yen versus the dollar. The dollar would get stronger out here. The daily time frame says, hold your horses, boys and girls. I'm getting ready, potentially, to form a TD9 count top. You're in bar number eight right now. It says you could see a short-term top inside of the yen between today and Friday out there. And then price would simply try to pull back and test that oscillator and change line. Currently, that's printed about buck 31 out there. So no reason to look at the intraday charts here. Um, uh, although you can see a 30-minute TD9 count top, price pulled back, found support at its breakout level, 133.63 out there. So it does look like the yen wants to continue to move higher, but anticipate a short-term top from a daily standpoint out there to form over the next couple of days. Now, all these currencies, since we've gone through the currencies, let's do one of Stevie's other things, and that is let's go take a look at Goldilocks. Why? And I just use gold as a frame of reference so that each of you, each of us, always remember that it's not really just about the U.S. dollar, okay? It is about all of the major currencies. And when it comes to gold, when it comes to crude, when it comes to a number of different components out there, it comes to everything, basically, is how is the instrument trading in the local currency? If you're sitting in Tokyo right now, well, hopefully if you're sitting in Tokyo, it's uh, you're, you're asleep because it's like uh, 1.44 in the morning. But you know what I mean. You know, if you're sitting in Tokyo, 
If you're sitting in Japan, preferably at this stage of the game, it's summertime, you'd go up to Hokkaido. You'd go uh, do a little uh, snorkeling. You'd take some of that uh, nice Hokkaido uni, sitting there on the uh, coral, crack them open, and just have a field day. But let's get back to the currency thing, Steve-O. Look, with regard to instruments, the question becomes, how is it trading on your screen in your currency? A sustained rally in anything needs to see price moving higher in all currencies. If you just simply focus only on gold and price in dollars, you're missing three-fourths of the piece of the puzzle. Now, right now, today, the rally in gold should stick. You've got gold trading slightly higher in terms of dollars, slightly higher in terms of euros, quite a bit higher in terms of yen, and higher in terms of pounds. So today's rally inside of gold should continue. It's uh, You've got a rally in all of those currencies out there. So always take a look at how an instrument is trading in those currency pairs out there. Let's go to our next question. This one coming in from the uh, Tiger's Den from G-Man. G-Man wanted to take a look at ticker symbol BSM. So let's get over to my uh, multi time frame charts out here. Uh, let's go change the uh, screens and let's go analyze BSM. So we've got that up on the screen. Anybody know what BSM is? I, I, I don't, but uh, we should know what it is. BSM is, drum roll Johnny, uh, it is uh, Blackstone Minerals. Blackstone Minerals is traded above the top of its monthly, its weekly, its daily profiles on a daily basis. It's taking out a TD9 count top. On a weekly basis, it's taking out a TD9 count top. On a monthly basis, BSM says, hey, I'm ready to explore resistance. I'm ready for the battle. That battle is going to go ahead and take price up to the level of 1877. That's its TD9 count breakdown resistance level out here. So we take a look at BSM. I see no topping patterns whatsoever. In fact, topping signals that are being negated, that tells us about a nice strong momentum move to the upside out there. So G-Man, if you're in this, stay in this. Now, your average true range over the last 10 days is 49 cents, so you should have some kind of a stop. There is a new daily profile that is in play out here. So maybe your stop is below 1622. That's the bottom of that daily profile. Or take 49 cents times 1.618. That's probably about 70 cents or so, 75 cents, 80 cents. Say it's 80 cents. Take 80 cents less today's close, whatever that is, and have a stop below that. But because you've got that profile in place, make sure that that mathematical calculation still gets you below 1622. 22 out there. So I hope that helps you out. Stay with that uh, trade. It is a, a beauty and perhaps will continue to move higher. Um, if you have time, can you please look at Tesla? Uh, yes, thanks, Steve. Disregard if you went it over. I have not gone over Tesla, so let's go take a look at TSLA. Uh, this will take just a moment here to populate. This one is for G Motion. Now, I think, folks, that I've gotten every request inside the Tiger's Den. Uh, but if I haven't and you have a request, uh, do me a favor, just uh, send it via the private message. And that way I'll be able to uh, easily pick up on it. It's just uh, there's so much typing going on. And that's not a bad thing. This is everybody sharing information inside the Tiger's Den. And you can, you know, I've got four screens going. And even on one of the screens where I've got the uh, conversation in the Tiger's Den, you know, it just can go by pretty quickly. So uh, the, the private message uh, tends to work better at allowing me to get to your request. And the request right now is to take a look at Tesla. So that's what we're going to do. Tesla on a monthly basis, as we've covered before, uh, it's got a nice road momentum indicator top that led to a test of support, the bottom of its bullish structured monthly profile. So the key level of support there, pretty easy to identify, 616.63. The weekly basis has a TD9 count top. Price pulled back to its breakout level. And that's at the 627.24 level. Now, I don't really have a bottoming pattern out here, uh, but we did. But but pulling back to breakout support can be the bottoming pattern. So it's not the A to B equals CD. It's not a TD9 count. That's not a Rhodes momentum indicator signal. It's not even a test of a swing point. It's just simply pulling back to the breakout level. So Tesla on a weekly basis pulled back to the breakout level of support. On a daily time frame out here, what do we have for Tesla? <clears throat> we have an A to B equals CD to the downside. I can't draw it in, but I can visually see that it's completed. It completed with this nice bullish engulfing candle on May 25th. Then price goes ahead and makes a move, and it uh, trades above the top of its daily profile for two consecutive sessions, but it was only two consecutive sessions. So maybe Tesla needs a third consecutive session, three consecutive sessions, that is, in order to prove its uh, 
um, it's a strength to us. Now, Tesla today is moving higher on what kind of volume? TSLA. I'm going to go off the uh, white screen here and see what we've got. I just have to type in the correct symbol, and then it pops right up. So there is no Y TSLA, just so you know. So volume today, about 19 million shares. As it pushes into the swing point from June 2nd, that had 31 million shares. So it's light in the loafers. Not bad, but still light in the loafers. Uh, and price finding resistance, as you can see on the daily base, at 750.09, the top of that daily profile. So G Motion, 750.09 is going to be a key level. If you can get three closes above that, then what you probably have is an A to B equals C to the upside, with yesterday being the C point out there. We don't know that to be a fact just yet, so don't just uh, take that home and say, hey, we've got an A to B equals C D pattern. We don't. But if we did get a close above 792, 63 to be exact then we'd be looking at a move to either 862 or 909 that's what we see when we take a look at the daily the weekly and the monthly charts for tesla steve roach with tfnn right back. sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument you have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. So on my screen, we still have the chart for Tesla. Just showing you the A to B equals CD down pattern. The A point out here starting on the high from April the 5th. The B point being the low on April 28th. The C point being just above a 0.382 retracement on May the 4th. And the D point, the one-to-one -one got us to 624.33. 
Price actually got down to 620.57. And the reason why this confirmed was because you had that nice bullish engulfing candle on May the uh, 25th out there. So now here's the potential A to B equals CD to the upside. Again, price got to take out first the top of its daily profile at 750.09. Then it has to take out the B point, which is trading into a pretty decent volume, at least as 155 in the afternoon. So 792.63 is the number there. What are we going to go take a look at then next? Well, let's take a look at this potential rally will it stick and if it does stick how long will it last out here well if i put up the daily time frame chart for the ndx 100 this top back here november the 22nd out here right where my cursor is at now since that top what we've seen is a four-day consecutive rally that took us into that uh, retest that november 22nd high then we had a three-day rally that was into the high on january 12th we had one four-day rally, four consecutive days. That was on February 2nd. Then a two-day rally out here into February 15th, a three-day rally into February 28th. We had another four-day rally out here into March 18th, and a two-day, a two-day, a two-day, a three-day. You kind of see it, a three-day out here. So yesterday was day number two. Very possible that that was the end of it, right? Or at least a sideways movement like we have right now. If we do get a close higher today coming into the end of the session, then what this tells us is maybe we have two more days. We haven't seen anything extend itself beyond four consecutive days to the upside. And if we do get a higher close today, it would suggest we could get a higher close tomorrow out there. So I hope that helps you out, folks. Stay tuned. Your favorite polar bear, David White, is up next. Tom O'Brien, he'll bring us on home. And I'll be back with you on Terrific Thursday. Really want you to have a wonderful Wednesday. So please go out there and do that. Be safe. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you again soon.